Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Did you ever see that one? It's the remake from 78, 79, something like that. It's got Donald Sutherland as the lead and uh, Brooke Adams, she was the dame. And whew, holy smokes, man, she a babe in those days. So the premise is these wispy alien things kind of float down to earth, attach themselves to plants. Looks like a little green pod with a pink flower on it. So Brooke Adams' character, she's a scientist. She takes one of these things home, thinking she's found a new species of plant or something. So she puts it in a glass of water, puts it on the bedside table, except overnight, it scrambles her boyfriend's brain, because he's acting real strange the I next don't day. Care. Why are you telling me this? How does Donald Sutherland come into it? Yeah, well, he's a health inspector. And so in his first scene, he's checking out this fancy French restaurant, real highfalutin place. But when he goes into the kitchen to check the soup, he finds rat turds in it that the chef claims are just capers. That's disgusting. What the hell is a caper? I don't know. A little uh, salty green ball, I think? Never heard of it. Sounds gross. Anyway, Sutherland and Brooke Adams, they kind of team up, see? because everybody else is acting so strange and zombie-like. So these little pods, what they do is open up and cover your entire body and make a copy of you. So then, when the big pod is ready, that pink flower on the front, it opens up and this clone version of you comes sliding out of there all wet and covered in white hair and writhing around Hinson, and slime. Hinson, stop it. I don't want to hear this. Just keep quiet until we get to the pub. Now, hold on a minute. I'm getting to some good stuff. See, now, so everybody, and I mean everybody in the whole world, is starting to get turned into these clone versions of themselves. And the clones are growing thousands more of the pods in a big warehouse so that every last person on Earth gets converted into a clone. And then this alien race will come down and wipe out humanity and take over the planet. Ah, oh, <laughs> I mean, man, it is a great movie. You gotta see it. I don't need to see it. You already told me the whole movie. Oh, no. No, no, there's lots of good stuff in there I didn't mention. Plus, I mean, Brooke Adams, man. <laughs> what a babe. No joke. She alone makes it worth watching. I don't know who that is. What? Sure you do. Days of Heaven with Richard Gere. Uh, The Dead Zone from the Steve King book. She was in those. Well. Yes, should. She's a babe. Or, well, she was. I don't know what she looks like now. Probably got kind of old. Ah, nah, thanks. Gave him up about a year ago. Bad for my heart, you know. Jeff Goldblum. He's an invasion of the body snatchers, too. Did I mention that? You know, Goldblum, he's the guy who's in, ah, uh, oh, well, he's in Cronenberg's The Fly. Oof, that one's a doozy. He's in this great movie, The Big Chill. He was in the Jurassic Park movies. I mean, he's the main guy in The Lost World. Have you seen any of those? Every fucking body's seen Jurassic Park. Well, yeah, but the second one. I don't know. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Well, you're really into those dork movies, aren't you? They're not dork movies. They're great. Just gotta, you know, give them a chance. I'll stick with Marty Scorsese, thanks. Taxi Driver, Goodfellas, you know, real movies. Hey, Lieutenant Columbo. Aw, uh, yeah. Columbo's good stuff, man. Did you know that he had one glass eye? Did you know Spielberg directed the first episode? Steve Spielberg. Did you know the cars on the show were actually his? Peter Fox, I mean. Yeah, he had three classic cars, uh, Peugeot 403s, I think they were. And he actually drove them Shit. on the show. What are you, a goddamn trivia machine? A quiz show host? 
Can't you keep your mouth shut for five seconds? <laughs> I'm sorry, Jermaine. I know. I, I'm nervous. I, I talk a lot when I'm nervous. Yeah, you talk a lot when you're not nervous, too. You talk a lot when you're happy, when you're sad, when you're hungry, drunk, everything in between. You know, it's your talking that's got us in this situation right now. You realize. So maybe just give me some peace and quiet for variety's sake. All right, Jermaine. Whatever you say, see what I can do. My God, what a dump. This is where you want to go. It looks like I got shot out of a dying Bennigan's. Hey, don't be knocking my alcoholic roots here. Everybody loves the old town. It's a neighborhood pastime. It's a neighborhood last resort. Let's get this over with. Hey there, Neil. Bud and a uh, shot for me and what are my friends having? Jameson, double. Neat. Coming up. Another one of these. Hey. Now there's a Harley man if I've ever seen one. Say, I bet that's your Harley I saw up front. Am I right, friend? Shut up, Henson. Just leave that guy alone. Whose else would it be, man? <laughs> yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You got me there. That's the stuff. You know, I had my first legal drink. Is that so? Yeah, that was years ago. Years ago. See, my brother Gene and a couple of buddies of mine Can I wanted to. Smoke in here? No. Can't smoke indoors anywhere. Not anymore. Fucking bollocks. So, anyhow, my brother Gene, a couple of our buddies, wanted to take me out for my 21st birthday. Get me good and effed up, you know. We started back at our place and knocked back a couple of jello shots. Then we did a couple of massive bong rips on this uh, wicked bong that Gene had made that was shaped like a fended Telecaster. You know. <sighs> I've gotten here is a bunch of 70s Euro pop bullshit. When's the last time you updated this thing, huh? Joe Ford was in office? Anyway, so uh, after that, we all piled into Gene's. He had a 91 Tracer wagon. Went over to Fred Rico's for margaritas and fish tacos. A little Mexican restaurant. So. After we ate, my buddies were paying up the bill and I stepped outside to have a smoke. I was uh, still smoking in those days, you know. Hall Mall Blue 100s, if you can believe that. <laughs> I mean, what was I, somebody's grandmother? Be a good boy and pass crowd of cancer sticks, am I right? <laughs> so anyhow. Over on the side of the building, I see this homeless guy laying there. And man, he is out cold. Probably got drunk and passed out or something. But so in front of him is a shopping cart. You know, like they'll do for recycling cans or whatever. But in his, it's piled high with fireworks. All different kinds of fireworks. You know, we had Roman candles, sparklers, smoke balls, little poppers. I mean, you name it, this guy had it. And so, leaning up inside all these fireworks is this ratty old cardboard sign that says, I kid you not, Wishes granted, five dollars a night. Wishes granted, is that so? I kid you not. Then what? So, this homeless guy, who I thought was maybe dead, all of a sudden he jumps up and gets right in my face. And with these wild green eyes, he says to me, Would you like to make a wish? I didn't know what to say. I just stood there staring at him with my jaw hanging open. 
Next thing I know, he's digging around in his fireworks, throwing them all over the place, and brings out this honker of a rocket. This thing's big around as a football, you know, colored all red and purple. So he shoves this in my hands, and across the side it says, Brutus, the Star Destroyer. Wow, the Star Destroyer. Just like on Star Trek. Battlestar Galactica. So the old timer says to me, I'll let you shoot that for 20 bucks, and you'll get to make a big wish. So I figure, what the heck? Give him a crumpled 20 from out of my jeans pocket. But then he gets real serious, you know, and says, do you know that for what you wish? You've got to be sure. Whoa. Yeah, I got chills, man. This guy was taking it all so seriously. So I thought about it for a second. Got a good solid wish in my head. And told him I was good to go. Then let a rip, he tells me. And he smiles. And from out of nowhere, he pulls a wooden match out. And pops the thing to life with his thumb there. You'll want to set that on the ground, he says. But I tell him, <laughs> nah, I got this. So, like a certified bad A, I take the lit match and the rocket, take a couple of steps into the parking lot, light the rocket, and I hold Brutus high over my head, aiming it into the sky. And then I wait it. And all of a sudden I hear this ripping, sparking sound. It starts getting hot, dang hot. It's like searing my fingers, I almost drop it. But I held on as long as I could. And then finally, I let it fly. Yeah, so I went through the window of a blockbuster video and uh, <clears throat> exploded. They were burning VHS tapes flipping all over the place. Thank God the place was empty. Nobody got hurt. My buddies, they come out of the restaurant. All they see is a burning building. They didn't know what happened. Yeah, we got out of there pretty fast after that, before the cops came, you know. But then what? Oh, well, nothing much, really. Came over here, got a few more drinks. What about your wish? Yeah, Barry, what about the wish? Uh, guys, are you serious? For fuck's sake, Barry. What did you wish for? Ah, uh, well, duh, guys. I. I can't tell you. Oh, oh what the on, hell? Barry. So you're not gonna tell us? I can't. That defeats the whole purpose of wishes. That's a shit thing to do, Barry. And a shit story, too. Now, are you about ready? Just hold on a minute there, Jermaine. I don't think I am ready just yet. Can you at least tell us if your wish came true or not? I cannot believe you, Barry. This should have been the place. We've been to the high school. We've been to the bowling alley. We've been to that shitty neighborhood in Aurora. We've been to the old town fucking buffet or whatever this place is. So now where are we headed? We don't have all day, Henson. We've got to make this happen sometime. I'm sorry, Jermaine. What can I say? It's not every day a man has to make this sort of decision. It's got, you know, gravity, weight to it. I got it. I know just the place. It better not be one of your reminiscent watering holes. No, no. Nothing like that. My brother Gene and I used to call it uh, our spot. A place we used to go camping, a uh, little outside of town. Not too far, I hope? Nah, not at all. 20 minutes, tops. Real pretty spot, though. I, I think it'll be perfect. Let's go. I'll, I'll show you where to turn off.
Beautiful, right? Boy, I haven't been out here in years. A lot of fond memories it brings back. My folks, they used to park their RV just right down there. Gene and I, and we'd run all over this place. Playing sports, getting sunburns, going swimming, spying on girls in their bathing suits. In the evenings, we'd uh, have a campfire down there with my folks, roasting hot dogs, marshmallows, usual stuff. My old man, he'd let us sip out of his beer sometimes. He was a Miller Lite man. Yeah, good days those were. You talk about Gene a lot. Where's your brother these days? Hey, yeah. Uh, you think I could bum one of those after all? No, I gave him up and everything, but seems like an okay time to have one. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. <clears throat> hey, how, uh... <clears throat> uh, Gene's dead. Oh. Yeah. Passed about three years back. Poor SOB. He was only 37. Heart attack. Too young, man. But, you know, he was a big guy. Kept up with the smokes. Heavy drinker, too. Borrowed that one from my old man. So, yeah. He liked all that good stuff that eventually kills you. Yeah, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, you know. It happens. But hey. Not a bad view, right? You know, this song kind of reminds me of uh, Time by Alan Parsons Project. You ever listen to that? Great band. Anyway, I always like the lyrics on this song of theirs, Time. There was a line that goes, Time keeps flowing like a river to the sea till it's gone forever. I always liked that. Something about it felt, I don't know, kind of true. So, uh, you all good? Yeah. Yeah, you know I think I am. And, uh, gee, I just want to extend my sincere thanks and tell you how much I appreciate. It's done. Guy took his sweet time with it too.